The amount of food that we consume around the world varies. In some places people eat a lot, in others they eat a lot less. We need to understand that although demand for food is on the rise, the supply of food isn't spread evenly around the world. We can see from this map that areas such as the USA and areas of Europe have the highest calorific intake with excess of 3,600 calories per day. Other areas consume far fewer calories, such as Sub-Saharan Africa. They're well below the recommended daily intake. Global food consumption is generally on the increase and there are a good few reasons for this. The population increase means that there is more demand for and more consumption of food. Improving development levels means that people have more disposable income and can afford to buy more food. Improvements in transportation means that the availability of foods out of season has been improved as well. And industrialization of agriculture has created more food, thus lowering its cost and making it much more accessible. The supply of food can vary around the world due to a number of reasons. Large populations like India and China have huge numbers of people working in agriculture, so can produce a lot. Other countries, often HICs and NEEs, are able to invest in agricultural machinery and farming technology, meaning that their output is increased significantly. Whereas some countries in sub-Saharan Africa experience drought as well as unreliable rainfall. A lack of education, training and investment also means that less food is produced. Food security means having access to affordable, safe and plentiful food, but some areas are more secure than others. The Food Security Index measures global food security. Indicators such as the country's food stocks, level of nutrition and political stability are used to calculate the index. Highest levels of food insecurity are found in sub-Saharan Africa. Producing more food than you need is called a food surplus, but most countries in the world still rely on imports to fulfil their population's needs. Those countries that have a food deficit also experience food insecurity. Food insecurity can produce a number of negative impacts. Famine is created by widespread shortages of food which can ultimately lead to death. Ethiopia in the 1980s and Somalia 2010 to 12 led to hundreds of thousands of deaths. Undernutrition is a lack of balance in the diet. Areas like Southeast Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa are frequently deficient in proteins and vitamins. Rising prices happen around the world due to the increasing costs for producing foods. This affects LICs most as they often have the fastest growing populations. Social unrest often corresponds to high prices for food, predominantly in African nations and the Middle East, but spreading as far as Venezuela, often leading to looting. And soil erosion, where overgrazing, overcultivation and deforestation has led to the removal of precious topsoil by the wind and rain. The continued supply of food to the world's population is critical, so it's really important to understand the number of factors that can affect this supply. Physical factors, like the climate of an area, can affect the crops that can be grown there. Extremes of temperature and rainfall will make it hard to produce food. A lack of water could lead to desertification and increased food scarcity. Pests and diseases are starting to move north and south due to warming temperatures, thus affecting crops and livestock. Human factors include things like conflict, which can lead to fewer crops being available, as well as poverty, where poor farmers cannot afford the technology, like fertilizers or pesticides, to assist their crops. Without technology, yields remain low, whereas improved technology in many HICs has improved productivity greatly. Following on from this is climate change, which is already starting to change the pattern of productivity around the world. More needs to be done to ensure that the rising demand for food can be met without some areas falling into insecurity.